Hey, good morning, people. Happy Thursday. Uh, today, I am going to talk to you about Psalms 35. It is a powerful psalm, and it just talks about vindication, vindication of God's people. Vindication is for the Lord. Judgment is for the Lord, and he is there to vindicate his righteous. And I love this psalm. I was, as I was praying and the Lord led me here this morning, I was like, yes, yes, because this is something I can talk about <laughs> very well because I have personal experience with this. But it says, the title of Psalm 35 is The Lord, the Avenger of His People. Now, you know, so often in this world, you know, we, we want to get back at our enemies, right? We want to have the last say, we want to make sure that you haven't gotten one over on me, right? That's the flesh. But we know that because we walk by the Spirit, we don't operate like the world. There are procedures in place for the way we as God's children operate. And in this psalm, David has had it. You know, David is feeling frustrated. But one thing that I love is David always seeks the counsel of the Lord. He didn't start going off and taking things in his own hands. He really just goes and always is so faithful um, most of the times to seek his counsel. I can only think of one time in the Bible where David did not. Maybe two. <laughs> Bathsheba and when he did the census, when he counted and numbered the army. He didn't seek God's counsel in that. Um, but. Other than that, David was faithful to always go to the Lord and to allow him to have the last say and to allow him to give him uh, the Lord to be his vindicator. And so in Psalm 35, David's going through it. The same people that are supposed to be his friends, the same people that he's been praying for, the same people he's been showing all this love for, they have counted themselves his enemy. They smile in his face. They say, they wink, you know, they say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm with you. But behind closed doors, they do another thing. You know, they speak poorly of him. They set a snare for him. They say they're praying for him. They say that they are walking with him, but really they want to see him fall, you know? And let's be honest, that's how so many people are in the world. That's how so many worldly friendships are. They say they want to see you succeed. They say they love you, that they're rooting for you. But inwardly, in their hearts, they're plotting wickedness. Inwardly, they really don't want to see you win. In, inwardly, there's an envy and jealousy. And this is why the Bible says, you know, it's, that jealousy is so cruel. Do you know that the Bible compares jealousy as the grave? Because the grave does what? The grave robs you of everything. It robs you of your looks. It robs you of your health, your wellness. I mean, it takes everything. And that's what jealousy will do to a person if you let it take root in your heart. That's why it's so awful. Okay? So that's why it's so important that you ask the Lord, search my heart. See if there be any wicked way. Because the Lord knows your motives. You know, there's no sense if you praying and fasting if in your heart, you really are not trying to seek the best for that person, for your brother or sister. If you're looking for them to fall, if you're looking for a moment just to cause a contention, to cause a, you know, division, then are you truly seeking after the things of God? Are you truly seeking to lift your brother or sister up in Christ? And this is something you really have to check your own motives. That's why every day you must examine yourself. Because David was praying for these people. He was fasting for these people. He said, I mourn for them as if my mother died. How many of you have been there? You're praying for folks. You're fasting for them like they're your relatives. Like they're your best friend. Like they're your BFF. And it seems like they don't appreciate it. It seems like they are talking against you. It seems like they are... Are cursing you instead of blessing you and you're thinking to yourself but Lord why but it's spiritual warfare you know you're not fighting that person it's the spirit behind that person so you have to remember to continue to bless those people who are cursing you there is power behind there there's a mystery behind that and people don't understand it 
You know, when Jesus was on the cross, they were spitting on him. They mocked him. They were sitting there playing dominoes, for goodness sake. They had no value for the pain that he was going through. None. Yet he looked down and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But here we are, we get petty about small things. We get petty and like, mm-hmm, she said this, and I can't believe that. I, mm -mm. I, she, I'm done with her. Whereas the Lord sat with Judas for three years and knew he was a, a traitor. See, the Lord will reveal to you who people are in your life. Oh, he makes you wiser than serpents, but gentle as a dove, okay? So you're aware of who you're dealing with, but you still have to walk in love because that Judas is right there for a reason and it could be to propel you to your destiny. See, if Jesus didn't have Judas in his life, he wouldn't made it to the cross. And because he made it to the cross, we all have the victory. He defeated death. He got the keys to Hades. So you need your Judas in your life. There's a reason why they are there. But I just love Psalm 35 because David gave the final say to the Lord. He did not take it in his own hands. He did not take judgment. He did not keep the bitterness in his heart, but he laid it at the altar. And we have to do that. When people betray us, when they mistreat us, when they talk about us, when they persecute us, when they spitefully use you, they just around you because they can get something. Lay it at the altar. Give it to God. And what I love about the story, this story, I know many of you have heard of, uh, of it. Um, Michael, the archangel, when Moses, they're looking for Moses' body because they can't find it because the Lord, I believe, has hidden his body because he knows how people are. They'll set it up for a monument and worship it probably, you know. And so they're looking for the body and they're going back and forth and Satan says something. And Michael says, the Lord rebuke you. Now, Michael could have went off and said something on his own accord, but here we see he, him giving it to the Most High. The Lord rebuke you. And that's how we have to be. When people treat us, mistreat us wrong, take it to the Lord. May the Lord rebuke you because he is righteous. He's a righteous judge. We're not always righteous. We can sometimes be petty. That's why we have to seek the Lord's counsel and let him be the vindicator. Don't take vindication for yourself. And don't try to, you know, uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Vindicate yourself. Like you're going to tell everybody, oh, I'm right. I didn't do this. You know, don't try to, to set yourself free from the, from the uh, ridicule. Let God do it. Just be quiet. Jesus sat quiet as they accused him. He didn't try to prove himself. No. When people speak bad about you, give it to the Lord. Don't try to prove yourself because he, I promise you, is the best vindicator. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Take a look at Psalm 35. It is wonderful. It's a great reminder of God's faithfulness and that we need to always let him be the judge. Let him be our vindicator. Um, and he is always faithful to, to, to set free the righteous. So uh, I wanted to let you all know that, you know, if you feel led to share this video, please share, subscribe to the channel. At first, you know, I've been keeping this very quiet because, you know, I'm quiet nature. I'm not like really looking. It's just to share this with everybody, but I think it's time. So, you know, if you feel led, feel free to share. And uh, I hope you all have a blessed day. Be encouraged in the Lord, and I will talk to you tomorrow, God willing. Take care. Bye.